generous young mother with everything to live for. She would honestly give the shirt off of her back in the middle of winter to anyone. So when it appeared Christine Mustafa walked out on her job and her precious daughters, everyone feared the worst. That's not Christine. She would not have done that. Cops say she didn't. This is officially a homicide investigation. And now, a desperate search is on to find the mother of two. Christine's parents had immigrated to the U.S. from Jordan, and before long, Christine was living the American dream. She purchased a house on her own as a single mom. Family friend Erin Nethery says when Christine gave birth last year, no one worried if she'd be able to juggle two daughters and a full-time career, least of all her employer. She had worked there for 11 years and never missed a day. But one day in May, the new mom literally fell off the grid. She was nowhere to be found. This was unusual. After a couple of hours and still no Christine, her family called Phoenix police to do a welfare check at her house. There in the driveway, Christine's car, but no one answered the door. That's when cops broke in. She left her passport, her purse, her cell phone, her car, her clothing, her children. It was very clear that something was very, very, very wrong. As police searched the house, Christine's live-in boyfriend and father of her new baby showed up. Robert Interval had moved in with Christine not long after she bought her home. She decided a roommate would really help me out to pay these bills. Christine placed an ad on Craigslist for a roommate, and the handsome former model answered. Now the roommate turned live-in lover was answering cops' questions. He was asked, where's Christine? Robert told cops her car had a flat tire that morning, so she walked to work, a detail that would later provide a key clue in the investigation. Aaron Nethery knew Robert before he moved in with Christine. She says he could be quite charming. Very friendly, outgoing, helpful to a fault. Soon, Christine was pregnant with Robert's baby, but not all was rosy. Robert had grown increasingly controlling, according to friends, even convincing Christine to move near his family. They left Arizona. Robert convinced her to move to Ohio for a fresh start near his sister. But Christine's family wondered if there was a different motive. They'd seen a different side of Robert. They felt that it was more of a move to separate her from her family and isolate her. If that was Robert's goal, it didn't work. And the family's concerns were real. While he looked like a gentle, doting dad, Christina's friends claim he could be a Jekyll and Hyde. Robert could go from very happy and joking, and it was like, boom, a light switch went off and suddenly dark and anger. Aaron says living in Ohio with their new baby actually gave Christine motivation to finally want out. She wasn't happy with raising a baby in, in that environment. So she moved back to Arizona near family, and what she did next may have put the young mom in grave danger. Rebecca Matthews will never forget the last text she sent her best friend, Christine. I sent her a text message right then and said, babe, is everything OK? Becca didn't expect a reply. She already knew everything wasn't OK. Christine never missed a day of work. And then all of a sudden, she doesn't show up. May 11th, Christine Mustafa vanished. And friends say it's what the mother of two was about to do that very day that may have triggered her disappearance she was going to also get a restraining order. Christine wanted her live-in landscaper boyfriend, Robert Interval, the father of her baby, out of her life. She was so close. She was so close to getting out, but she never made it. From the moment cops arrived at her home, Robert's story just didn't add up. He claimed she had a flat tire and walked to work that morning, but... Her work 
was miles across town. There's no way you could walk, let alone in that heat. And when cops checked the car, there was no flat tire at all. Then came Robert's suspicious behavior. Suddenly, he'd put a bunch of Christine's things up for sale. I was flabbergasted. Robert had put up Christine's car for sale, his landscaping truck for sale. There were items from the home that were for sale. Suspicious investigators returned the next day to some surprising finds. Robert answered the door with a loaded gun and a baby. Cops removed the gun from Robert's pocket, and after seeing his daughter's bedroom, child services removed her from the home. Inside was a disturbing clue. It was very evident that there had been used bleach spray. You know, it, it bleaches the paint. Robert's explanation only raised police antenna even more. He tells cops that a day earlier, he had no choice but to give the baby's room a thorough cleaning with bleach. He made some excuse about the baby having bed bugs in her room. But DCS investigators didn't buy it. They uncovered so many red flags from the relationship, including a terrible account told by one of Christine's sisters to our Phoenix affiliate. He literally pulled her by her hair, uh, shoved her out of the car, shoeless, purseless, phoneless. He was helplessly running down the street, begging for help. Now Christine was missing and Robert was the main person on cops' radar. His sister Gia flew to Arizona to be with her brother, but it turned out to be a very short visit. It was too much for her. Robert's sister flew back to Ohio because she couldn't handle it. What Gia couldn't handle? Believing her brother had killed Christine. That's exactly what she suspected after a chilling conversation with Robert himself. Gia says the one-time model admitted a big fight started with Christine after she threatened to leave him. She claims he then repeatedly said, I've taken it too far, and I've seen things I can't unsee. And what that means is just too frightening to even comprehend. Whatever it meant, it was enough for cops to get another search warrant. This time, they found what's believed to be physical evidence of foul play inside the couple's home. It's our understanding that there's blood uh, in both the baby's bedroom and in her bedroom. Cops say a phone was found in the bathroom between the toilet and the bathtub. Becca can't bear to think about what that could mean. Maybe she went in the bathroom to call for help and he busted in, and I believe that she was trying to call for help and, and he made that impossible. Though cops found blood and other evidence, they still didn't have a body. That's when hundreds of volunteers joined the Mustafa family to search. Sometimes 10 people would show up, sometimes 30 or 40 people would show up, but this is all in triple digit heat in the middle of Arizona summer. Sonu Wasu of our Phoenix affiliate says finding the mother of two became a citywide effort. They were friends, neighbors, co-workers, um, even those who didn't know her. They want to know where Christine is, what happened to her. But Becca says there was one person who didn't seem concerned about finding Christine, her boyfriend, Robert. Robert was nowhere to be found. Weeks of searching came up empty. But on the one month anniversary of Christine's disappearance, cops felt they had enough evidence to arrest Robert Interval and charge him with her murder. Sir, your name and date of birth, please. Robert Interval. We do have some evidence that does point to uh, Robert as being a suspect. Uh, he was also the last person to see Christine, uh, and I think he's the one that really has these answers. It was a little re release of fear. Um, because there was so much fear that he was going to get away with it completely. In July, cops released more critical clues. There is a landfill in West Phoenix where we believe Christine to be. Evidence suggests Christine was killed inside her home on May 10th. Cops suspect Robert then dumped her body in a nearby trash container. 
we have the area that we believe her to be uh, pretty well identified. Although he's hopeful Christine can be found, Officer Alan Fole admits there are no guarantees. While it's our greatest hope to find Christine, we also tell the family not to get their hopes up because this is a very difficult task. Sadly, Christine's disappearance isn't the first tragedy to strike the Mustafa family. She is the third daughter they've lost. One of Christine's sisters several years ago was murdered. Um, in December, another one of their sisters died of cancer. And to add to this family's heartbreak, they can't get custody of Christine's baby daughter, one of their strongest living links to Christine. With her father, Robert, behind bars, the child remains in protective custody. Robert has parental rights. Christine's not here, so she's considered to have abandoned the child. Christine's sisters go and see the baby as often as they are allowed to. The Mustafas want full custody given to Christine's twin sister, who is also now raising Christine's teenaged daughter. Robert wants her to go to his sister. Right now, the law is on his side. But Aaron says Christine's family will never quit fighting for custody or for justice because it's what Christine herself asked them to do. Christine told her sisters, if ever I go missing, go and get my baby. Find Rob and get my baby. Fight for her. Don't let this stand.